Hey there, astrology lover. Welcome. My name is Jennifer Barish, and I will be your cosmic guide this week going through the astrological energy with your forecast. It's a big old full moon out there today, October 17th. And I'm going to talk more about the moon and we're going to do horoscopes for all of the 12 signs. So this forecast is for the week of October 17th, which is a Thursday through next Wednesday, October 23rd, 2024. Uh, these uh, horoscopes and forecasts brought to you by Astro College. So go sign up for our newsletter, astrocollege.org, and you can get this in written form. And every week we we will tell you four or five things in the sky to watch for and what energies to be preparing yourself for. Hopefully with a little practical advice that you can use just in day to day and you don't have to be an astrologer, you know, to be able to follow some of this. So go grab yourself something warm to drink and let's get started. All right, so as of right now, we have had Venus move. She has been in Scorpio. She just moved into Sagittarius this afternoon. So Venus is all about love and romance and passion, what your passion projects are, what you're interested in doing, but it can also be like your business and your money, things that are valuable to you. And she is now in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is a fire sign, so you're getting all lit up and you're going to see that energy shift. It's going to move faster. Of course, this full moon is in Aries, and Aries is also a fire sign so they are simpatico they are working together venus and that moon right now however later this afternoon october 17th we are going to see that moon shift into taurus which is going to settle that moon down a little bit so if it has been a hard day for you maybe you're watching this over the weekend reflect back to what thursday brought up for you what kind of issues so let's talk about the full moon to get started. Um, it perfected this morning at around 7.30. However, we're still in that full moon period. You're going to feel some of that stress and tension over the next couple of days. Um, that doesn't uh, dissipate or change, you know, a couple of days up to the full moon to a couple of days after. And so that Aries energy is asking you to start something new. It's asking you to initiate change. And especially with this full moon, which is extra powerful, um, it's a super moon for one thing. But secondly, more powerful in that we have a formation called the Grand Cross. It's a Grand Cardinal Cross. And it looks like a big X in the sky. And that X has to do with the sun and moon being opposite of each other, but also Pluto and Mars who are coming to perfect. They're not exactly opposite, but they create that tension. So it's a real um, tense, anxious, uh, oppositional kind of time. So if this moon has been especially hard for you, just know that this too shall pass. I do think when we get into the Taurus moon over the next couple of days, things are going to settle down and feel a little bit better. So just hang in there and bear with me. But we are, you know, in full moon energy. And this week, we're going to feel that as it slides into the first quarter. So the first, uh, you know, quarter of a moon phase from full moon to actual first is that beginning or initiation cycle. Something is being birthed, something's being born, there's some fresh start somewhere. So in order to have that fresh start, something sometimes has to give, something has to break, right? And so you may have felt that break, like something popped, like there was, uh, you opened a nice bottle of Prosecco and that cork popped. Hopefully it popped somewhere, uh, not where it hit you in the face or in the eye, but that full moon struggle is real. It is a struggle. Um, Aries is all about the self and opposite in the sky. The sun is in Libra. And so Libra is all about the other or the partnership or our relationships or our friends. And it's this little dance between what are your self needs and what are the needs of this partnership or this group. So where have you been noticing tension? How can you appease both of those? 
So there has got to be a way to find synergy, to find cooperation, collaboration. And when you can't figure it out, the best way with this Aries moon is to do a little self-care. Spend time by yourself, focus on hobbies or things that make you feel good, you know, uh, getting lost in your own little world, reading a book, you know, going to spend some time alone. Aries is a sign that likes some alone time. They need some alone time to be able to get all these big feelings. Think about it. Aries fire. Go, 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 go. So they need time to be able to bring all that together, to bring all that in, to find a little self-control so that they can handle these big emotions that they feel so and then that way if they've handled their emotions properly then it doesn't you know come out of their mouth like flames you know like a fire breathing dragon which some Aries can uh, be and I know that from experience because I do have an Aries moon and it is a 29 degree Aries moon and so if you do know any astrology that's a culminating point and it is kind of like being on a diving board all the time making a decision about things and sometimes you just have to take a leap you just have to say okay we're gonna go for it and sometimes it works out and sometimes not so much so Spending a little alone time can be a good tool immersed in your hobbies or things that you love to do and can help you to kind of get your head together. And that's some good advice for this full moon. So it helps you to soothe that inner dragon. And think about it like... Um, on the airplane when they say if we had a problem with air pressure you put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you help other people you know that's what we're proverbially doing is if we're doing self-care we're taking care of the self before we are trying to fulfill all the needs of the other people so it's this balance it's this little dance and that's what a full moon is it is a dance the two stand opposite in the sky the sun is directly opposite from the moon and it's feeling like you're being pulled apart like a tug of war between these two ends self and other self and other so just listening to that small voice inside getting quiet spending some time alone that can can help you and this this grand cross that's in the sky it's initiating change movement taking action you may be feeling a little push somebody's trying to start a fight there's some opposition or conflict somebody somewhere is saying i don't want to i don't want to maybe that's you okay how can you move forward Maybe it's just taking a little break first before you have to be pushed to move forward. But maybe if it's somebody who, you know, uh, like a little kid is saying, I don't want to. And you're like, yeah, you got to. You know, taking a step back to consider how can we move this forward. So Venus moving into Sag, that's a big deal happening this afternoon. Venus will be in Sagittarius until November 11th. So we've got a good little window, a little period of time here. And that is adding Jupiter energy. And you're like, well, what is Jupiter energy, Jen? Well, it's great. It's good news because a Jupiter has a positive outlook, is hopeful that everything's going to be all right. Jupiter is a benefic. It makes things bigger, brighter, more expansive. You know, it, it's, I think about Sagittarius as a fire sign. You know, going along with Aries, the fire sign, lighten things up. Jupiter's bringing new ideas. It's helping you to think bigger thoughts, to take an eagle eye view instead of the sparrow's view. You know, it's like you're in a drone. You're getting a little bit higher and you're able to see the bigger picture instead of getting so focused on these little details that cause you so much problem. So this is big manifestation energy when uh, Venus is in Sagittarius. And, and so I challenge you to think of how you can do this in a new way. Can you dream a new way into being? What is a, a new solution to an old problem? And if you put Venus to work for you, she's going to help you manifest a way to get this done. So with that big X in the sky, you know, and Venus shifting, and then we're going into a Taurus moon later this afternoon. We'll be there for a couple of days. So the moon switches signs every two and a half days, which is good because it gives us a chance to have a flavor of all the moons, okay? So, but when people are moony or moody, 
that's part of what's happening. So it's important to know where that moon is astrologically. And you can find charts out there. There are apps you can put on your phone. I have a full moon app, which tells me not only what phase, but what astrological sign. And if you follow that, it's going to help you to know. So we'll start there. I want to tell you about the moons this week because I think it's going to be helpful for you. So notice, we'll dial it back, uh, yesterday, Wednesday the 16th, today's Thursday the 17th, we've had this fiery Aries moon. It's been kind of like striking a match, getting things going. This is the best moon of the week for getting things started. And it's occurring until uh, early afternoon or around 4 o'clock Eastern Time on Thursday. So if there's something that you needed to get started for the week, Thursday was the day to initiate it. And I want you to think back, if, if you're watching this a little bit later, that you possibly did initiate something on Thursday. So then Thursday around 4 o'clock that moon shifts into Taurus. It's going to be in Taurus on Friday through Saturday afternoon around 3.30 or 4 o'clock. And Taurus moon is a yum yum moon. It is all like foody um, kind of vibes. Think about uh, macaroni and cheese and mashed potatoes and comfort foods and bacon chocolate chip cookies. So when I say a foodie vibe, so comfort foods, things that bring us comfort. And Taurus uh, is really a sensory uh, type of person so that energy is lean into the senses you know whether um being outside being out in nature in the trees you know it's a beautiful time to go out if you have leaves, leaves that change color to be able to go and see that but it's also like candles wine and roses kind of days where uh, you might be in the mood for a little more romance and thinking about well who do i want to snuggle up with this weekend you know uh, friday and saturday are going to be good days for that and given that taurus is an earth moon it can kind of settle people down a little bit it does doesn't overreact. Taurus moon moves a little bit slower. So a person that has a Taurus moon, if you're trying to make a change in their life, you need to tell them in advance. They need time to process it. Like for instance, if I were going to paint a room in my house, my husband has a Taurus moon. I have an Aries moon. I'm ready to change, change, change. And he is like, breaks, no way. So if I'm going to make a change, I need to mention it a month in advance. We need to talk about it three or four or five times. I need to give him time to see how it can be. I've got to envision it for him. I'm also Sag rising. So this Sagittarius energy makes me feel so good and so happy. If you have fire in your chart, this is really going to be uplifting for you too. So, but I have to give him a little bit of time. Taurus Moon says, let's just slow things down. Let's stop and smell the roses. Just like uh, the little cartoon, Ferdinand the Bull. You know, he's out smelling the flowers and being outside, you know, things that smell good, sensory experiences, uh, a good taste, comfy sheets, a fireplace, any of that kind of stuff is going to feel good this weekend. And with an earth moon, this is a good moon for building the foundations of something. You know, uh, Friday and Saturday are going to really, with this earth moon, be the best days of the week for my earth and water people. And so when I say earth and water, that could be your, your sun sign, your moon sign, your rising sign. But you might run your chart and see which element you predominantly are. Because you may have, even though your sun might be in earth, you might have a lot of water in your chart. You know, and well, this moon would be good for that. But what if you have a lot of air in your chart? This moon might not be your favorite moon. But we've got a solution for that. Because the next sign up on Saturday afternoon is Gemini. And you're going to notice uh, Saturday afternoon you're going to get a phone call. Somebody's going to reach out. Things are going to pick up and become more chatty, more talkative, more communicative. Uh, people are wanting to go out. Let's go do lunch. Let's go out to a concert Saturday night. And so lots of just like busy, let's talk about it, let's communicate type of energy. It's an air sign. So this runs through Sunday, uh, all day Sunday and into Monday till about 5 o'clock on Monday night. And so this Gemini moon are going to be the best days for the air and fire people. 
So uh, sun and moon are tracking together here and we have the sun in Libra and with the moon in Gemini, they're both in air signs. And then with Venus in Sag, a fire sign, that's like three all working together. So you may find that Sunday and Monday until about dinner time are the best week or days of the week for you overall, but especially if you're an air sign or a fire sign. So be watching for that. And then in the evening on Monday, around 7 o'clock, we slide into the next sign, the next moon, which is Cancer. Cancer is a number four of the signs, so we start out with Aries. It's always in this order around the wheel. Aries, Taurus, Gemini. Now we're number four, Cancer. Monday night, all day Tuesday through Wednesday night late. Um, it's a water moon. Cancer moon is more emotional. It's going to quiet things down. Cancers feel everything. This is the type of energy where you walk into a room and you know the moods of everybody without having to talk to any of them. You don't need words. You can just feel it inside of yourself. And the moon is in her home in what's known as her domicile um, in Cancer. That's where she's most comfortable. And if the moon is most comfortable in her home, you might be feeling this too feeling like you're looking for spaces that feel like home to you, comfy, cozy. You may just want to stay at home the first part of the week. You know, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday may feel more like home days, especially Monday evening. Um, but so the first part of Monday, we're still in that Gemini uh, chattiness and busyness. So Monday morning may still be busy and hectic, but things are going to slow down Monday night. So I want you to notice that and watch where that happens for you. So uh, the next moon that comes up after four is number five, and that's Leo moon, which won't happen until next Thursday, which will be on here again, but that's the 24th. And with a Leo moon, we shift again. That's in fire, much like the Aries moon. Things are popping. Things are cooking. We are working on things. Very creative moon. Um, this is a leadership moon, somebody who's ready to take charge, but they also want to be seen. Like, do you like my hair? Do you like my clothes? You know, I'm seeking attention during a Leo moon. I want to go out. I want to be star of the show during the Leo moon. And I can say that honestly because I do have a Leo sun. So I carry that energy. And sometimes we're ready to be seen. Now sometimes, like with an Aries moon, we're not ready to be seen. But when you have Leo in your chart, you take your moments of like, yeah, let's dress up and go out and play. So that is our moons of the week. Um, yeah, that does that. So now let's look at the best days or days to watch this week. So I've got four things for you. One is that full moon we've already talked about with the big X in the sky, that cardinal cross, Venus moving into Sag, offering some support about how you're going to get this thing done. And then the second thing that we're going to talk about is on Monday, October 21st, we've got Mercury and Saturn working together. And you're like, Jen, why, what does that matter? Well, I'm going to explain it to you. Mercury has to do with our thinking, our communication, our mental processes, and that is working along with Saturn, the planet of rules and structures and boundaries and discipline and how we get things done. Are you getting it? How we think and how we get things done? They are on the same wavelength. They are in an aspect called a trine and it is flowy and smooth and you're just going to know how to get things done. So intuitive knowing downloads a, a version of clarity around structure, routines, and a very disciplined mind. So I ask you, starting the first of next week, what do you need to focus on? This aspect's going to help you to focus. It's like we've got two streams and they are running together and all of a sudden you're going to be able to see something that you didn't see before. So there's going to be some sort of reveal, but it's going to be mental inside of yourself. You're, it's like a little aha moment, like, huh, okay, I got it now. And with the power of these two running together and then later Monday night, that moon is going to move into Cancer. So we've got Saturn and Pisces, water sign. We've got 
Mercury in Scorpio, water sign. And then the moon is going to move into another water sign in Cancer. So three water signs working together. They create another aspect called a grand trine. And this is like a flowing triangle in the chart. It just loops together. It works together. We just know we, the three become one. And you are going to be able to really see how to get done what you need to get done. Now, when it's water like that, not only is there strong gut instinct, uh, intuitive type of vibes, but it can make you a little emotional. Uh, also, with lots of water can come flooding, both literally and proverbially. So it might be out your eyes, but it could be just watch for flooding around your house. Somebody didn't leave the water hose hooked up outside, and then, you know, you had a deep freeze. We're starting to freeze here in Cincinnati, and that, that pipe burst because they left the water hose plugged up. Stuff like that. Um, so just a kind of like being what do they call it waterlogged you know when you've stayed in or stayed in the bathtub too long and your fingers and toes start to get a little crinkly and you're like okay I've had enough time in the water you may find yourself the first part of next week you know Tuesday and Wednesday like I've had enough time in the water it's been too emotional I want out of this but I will say you're just going to know how to handle some things it's just going to come to you like a eureka moment so I want you to like dive into that what do you need to get done you know spend some time meditating or in quiet practices journaling where you can really start to connect with yourself and understand like okay where do I need to um, move forward how do I get the structures I need in place maybe you need a new calendar maybe you need to get organized maybe you need to start planning for next year because it is coming and I will put in a little plug here for Astro College, we have a beautiful forecast coming up with Diane Trimbath that I want you to look for that she is going to go over the energies of next year. Um, I believe if it's not already up at astrocollege.org, it will be soon as a class you can sign up for. And that's coming up in mid-November. So planning, you know, organization, structures, routines, what do you need to revise in your life? And that's what this uh, aspect, this Mercury trine Saturn is talking about. And that happens on Monday, but you may start feeling it on the weekend that you need to get it together. A couple of days pass, let's go into Tuesday and Wednesday. So the first part of the week, that same feeling like it's time to get it together, friends. And so that's that aspect. And then the next thing I want to tell you about, the third thing of the week, is on Tuesday, October 22nd. Well, first we have um, the sun is making a hard aspect to the planet Pluto. Okay, so it's kind of like banging our knee on the coffee table. It hurts or you bump your elbow. I know I have bumped my elbow. I don't know how many times in the washing machine trying to dig in there and get the clothes out because I'm kind of short. I'm only 5'2", so I have to reach real deep to get in there and I have knocked my arm and just about hit the floor because of the pain. Now, I'm not saying it's that bad, <laughs> but I'm just saying that it's kind of like, you know, getting a little wake up call. Something wakes you up and is going to demand your attention on Tuesday when that sun squares Pluto. You are going to be alerted to the fact that something needs to be fixed or needs to change. And this can show up in power struggles. It can be people trying to pick a fight. It can be noticing manipulation coming in. So Pluto is the planet of what they call the hell realms. I know Rick Levine likes to talk about that. And, uh, you know, something is coming up from underground, you know, the dirt, the cheese, the taboo subjects are coming up and they are messing with the way that you whistle while you work. You're just going along and doing your thing like Snow White and the Seven Dwarves and you are just getting things done. You know, Mercury and Saturn were working together and then this ugly thing comes up and it is just screwing with your shine. So there could be internal fears, there could be, you know, secrets or something that's being withheld and you can just feel it. And there's like this just deep, dark kind of ick. And when it comes to calling, you're going to know, you know, you might not know what it is, but be able to try to take a pause, 
take a deep breath and say, this is just a feeling right now. Okay, I do not have to answer to this. And I give you permission. You do not have to answer to this right now. This too shall pass. We don't have to react to everything that comes up. Just because it makes us feel a little icky. When you get that feeling, a good suggestion, friends, is to go get yourself some sage and sage your house. Get the ick out of there. Get the feelings, you know, whatever that little dark, ugly, hell realm thing that's coming up for you. I don't know how that's going to manifest. It could just be bad thoughts. You know, find a way to flip that script to do something different. Um, I was reading a little meme on one of the social medias, and it said the opposite of depression is expression like artistic expression so if you start feeling a little bit low with this aspect next tuesday think about that the opposite of depression is expression how can you express yourself more fully what can you create what do you enjoy creating you know some people enjoy working on cars go work on your car some people enjoy gardening go work on your garden go start your winter garden go and get yourself a little greenhouse that can go out on your back deck you can amazon them they're really cheap and cute and you can prolong the life of your plants one of my hobbies but you know finding ways to pull ourselves out of a rut so on Tuesday, you might start feeling a little in that rut and you've got to figure out a way to get yourself out of there and know that this too shall pass. So that's my recommendation for the first of the week. And then later on Tuesday, around six o'clock that evening, we have a helper. So the sun is changing from Libra into Scorpio. We are going into Scorpio season. Yay! And that's going to be a big help, believe it or not. Now you're saying, Jen, I know Scorpio energy. That is not a big help. And I'm saying, yes, it is because the mood is going to shift because you and Libra season have tried to been trying to play it nice, to be fair, to sugarcoat it, to try to be equal, everybody getting along. Scorpio says, I don't give a shit about that. You don't have to get along. No more Mr. or Mrs. Nice Guy. Scorpio says, get down and dirty if that's what it takes to protect yourself. Dig in, get to the bottom of things, and you don't have to fix it or play fair for anybody, for the group. It's not your job anymore. Scorpio is cleaning house. Scorpio is fixed water. Very intuitive, but still in the swamps. Scorpio will dig into that mud and muck and it will clear things out. So I have a little bit of a gross story. My dog Cato, he is a black lab mix. He has had an infected hair that's been on his back. And it started as this little tiny place, you know. And then over time, it has gotten to the, about the size of a walnut and about that tall on his back. Okay, that thing popped. It was so gross. This like black stinky infection this is what i and i'm using this as an analogy for scorpio season like pulling that out of him so i take him to the vet and they clean all that stuff out they put him on an antibiotic and we've still just been cleaning and using peroxide and putting like i don't know a neosporin type of medicine on there you know sometimes we have to you know, pop the boil, pop the zit, and get the gunk out of there. And Scorpio is going to help you do that. Going to help you to clean that house. All of a sudden, you're not on the fence anymore. Because Libra had us riding on the fence. We're like, we're on a teeter-totter. We're all trying to get along. Can't we just be friends? All this kind of stuff. Well, Scorpio says, piss on all of that. It's time for you to take care of your needs, okay? Scorpio is going to help you stand in your truth. Scorpio keywords, deep, intense, taboo topics are okay. You can handle power, finding intimacy, um, the healer vibe. So think about like a surgeon who knows how to go in and cut out the bad things so they can find the good, so they can get to the good. So like sometimes like with a wound like that, at first they gave my dog this antibiotic, but they said, you know, if this doesn't heal it, we're going to have to go in there and cut all that out. We're going to have to do surgery and put him to sleep. But you know, if they that happens, if that has to happen, it's going to get all that badness out of there, all that gunk, all that infection that hair that's in there that's an infected you know so that he can renew 
and he will heal and his skin will grow back over and then his hair will grow back and it's a type of a regeneration you know it's like when you prune a tree or you prune a bush you have to cut it down you know you have to get in that undergrowth and you have to cut it back so that it can take its energy and go down into the root ball over the winter and really focus on building that root system instead of all these branches you know and that's what our trees are doing during this season they're dropping all the leaves you know because they can't hang on to all that anymore and they're sending their energy down the tree trunk and into the roots to be able to take care of the deepest part of the tree so you're going to become a pruner this season okay scorpions that energy they're good with their hands so think of a sculptor somebody who does woodworking you know pottery and all the medical people doctors and surgeons most doctors have some form of scorpio in their chart i bet you didn't know that and they can handle and the reason why is a scorpio can handle the intensity and get through the emergency these are excellent responders this is the type of person you want in an emergency and in some ways that scorpion energy another keyword is sorcerer because they can move from death into life they help that transition they can take the pressure and they can stay focused all the way to the end result so i want you to listen and take all these keywords in take what you like leave the rest but see how this scorpio energy this deep dark water fixed water intensity can help you to get focused and make some real changes for you this month and that would be my wish for you so thinking about what do you need to clear away what gunk is stopping up your drain? Where can you use this focus to clear away the dead wood in your life? Those three questions. Do you have an answer? We'd love to hear. Send us a message and let us know. Okay, friends. Well, now we're going to move on into the horoscope. So this is a full moon horoscope for you. I want you to listen first for your ascendant or your rising sign. And you say, Jen, I don't know how to do that. Then you are going to go out to uh, astrocollege.com, not org. We have a chart uh, uh, app that's built in that you can use to be able to run your chart. And you're going to see what your ascendant or rising sign is. That's the most accurate forecast is when you're going by your rising sign. But you can also look at your sun sign. You can look at your moon sign. Your moon sign is going to tell you more about your emotional body. And a lot of people like to actually use the Mars sign because the Mars sign tells us how we're going to move forward in life. It's like our gas pedal. And so knowing where do I steer this ship, which way should I steer the wheel of this car can help us to know how to move forward. So first rising, then sun, then moon, then Mars. That would be the order that I would look at my horoscopes. So first we're going to start with Aries. And excuse me, I need a little drink of coffee here. First of all, happy half birthday Aries. You're halfway there. This full moon emphasizes you. It's all about you Aries and your need to be seen for personal growth, and to assert yourself. So I would say there's some way that you've been holding yourself back, Aries, and I would say that it's time for you to speak up and show up and show out. You may find yourself questioning how to assert yourself because you've been trying to keep it harmonious with Libra season, status quo, we're all trying to get along, and you are feeling like you're getting lost in the fray. It's time to express your autonomy while also fostering connections. You don't need to choose Aries. You think you have to choose, but they can coexist. So what it comes down to is building me time and building we time. A little time for both. So I want you to look at your schedule and figure out where can you get some alone time. And then I want you to also build in time for your special people so you have time together too. And that's how you get the balance for both. So reflect on where you need independence or where that's clashing with your people. And it literally may be scheduling time so that you can find a way to honor both ends of the spectrum. But speak up and show out Aries. This is your week and your moon. All right, Taurus. So your keyword for the week, Taurus, is rest. 
your moon is coming in Thursday afternoon, Friday, Saturday. You are closing the door on some things. You are turning the page and you are going to retreat into your inner world. Inside of yourself, you may need to hermit for a little bit. You know, this full moon is asking for you to take a break, releasing old storylines, old habits, old attachments, and just let it go. You're going to heal best when you just go internal. When you take a little break, you just surrender to the flow of life. Just trust the universe is here to help you, Taurus, because it is. So I want you to seek closure for any lingering emotional hoo-hahs and welcome possibility of something new in and Taurus I know you don't like change but you know if you'll just get quiet a little bit you're going to get a chance to ground you're going to get uh, really in line with yourself it would be a good idea for you to seek nature this week because I know that you like to be out in the natural world but look for things that bring you comfort emotional comfort and maybe that's the consistency of your day to day that is a good thing for you Taurus uh, time in nature, stillness, meditation, yoga, all these things would be good for you. Things that soothe you and make you feel comfortable and relaxed and in your natural rhythm. And sometimes just that routine, just your day to day. But just try to get quiet and find a little stillness. Seek some rest this week and it is going to serve you best coming out of this full moon. Next we have Gemini. Gemini, the big word for the week for you is collaboration. So under the moon, your attention is focused on your community, your networks, your groups, but also your hopes, wishes, and dreams. Now, how do those two come together? You know, you have things that you want to do, but you also have ways that you want to participate in the greater good of the world at large, okay? Maybe you need to volunteer somewhere. Maybe you need to help pick up trash. Maybe you need to go to your kid's school and spend some time volunteering in the cafeteria. All of those all of those are ways that you can collaborate and helping to take care of like the greater good. That's going to be what you're thinking about. So I just ask you, Gemini, what mark would you like to leave on the world? If you weren't going to be here, you know, in the future, say like this is your last year on earth, what mark would you want to leave, Gemini? That's kind of the vibe for right now. Not that it's the last year on earth, but what mark do you want to leave? This is an ideal time to collaborate with others on causes that resonate with your heart and soul and let your voice, Gemini, contribute to the larger vision, to the greater good. And that's going to be very soothing for you. All right, next we have Cancer. Cancer, your word this week is discipline. Well, you have two words, discipline and leadership. So this moon shines a light on either your professional life or who you want to be out in the world. And it is challenging you to show up for yourself, to be a leader in your own life. So you may have recently taken on more responsibility at work or within a career. Or maybe you've been trying to start a small business, a little side gig, and you just can't get things off the ground. I ask you, where do you get sidetracked? Maybe you've been too busy caring for everybody else's needs, especially during Libra season, and you need to come inside and say, okay, I need to schedule time for planning. I need to schedule time for building up this, this business. You know, how can I do this in my spare time? Even if it's just an hour a day. You've got to get disciplined and build a plan and set yourself an alarm it literally may be an alarm on your phone that every day at 4 o'clock you're going to work on this little dream that you have cancer. It's not going to happen if you don't do the discipline piece of it. And that's what this moon is showing to you. So I'll give you a little example. My sister is a cancer. She loves to cook and she loves to grow a garden and she likes to can things. And so canning is not something that many people do very much. And so people in her community knows that she has lots of canned goods. And so she could literally have a little side business of selling her canned goods like green beans and tomatoes and all kinds of yummy carrots, things from her garden, right? She makes soups, she makes jellies and jams, I mean, pickles, 
uh, pickled garlic, tons of really cool things. She just sent me home with a, a big container and I'm like, ooh, what did we get from the garden this year? So she could literally have a small business, but she has two kids at home and she homeschools her kids. And so she, her kids are her life and I love that for her. That is wonderful. But how can she get this little canning business off of the ground? She's got to get discipline. We were just talking about this and spend some time planning for next year. Like how can I make this happen? So if she would spend just an hour a day and after this forecast, I'm going to call her and tell her, You've got to start putting some time in. Maybe it's just an hour a week, two hours a week that you take away from the girls and homeschooling so that you can plan your small business and plan out your garden next year and what you're going to sell from your garden. And that's how she can, can work at her small business and help it to bring in, you know, some revenue that can be helpful to the family. So in another way, it's taking care of the greater good by getting what you're working on professionally off of the ground so if you can look at it that way cancer it can make it even more worthwhile that you set aside time for discipline okay next leo leo your word of the week is expansion friend and you know how to do expansion like nobody else um you are challenged this week to think about things differently this moon wants you to get big to look at the horizons you've never even considered before. What's the wildest, craziest dream, Leo, that has ever come up in your mind about what you could do? What is the biggest thing you have ever dreamed for yourself before, Leo? This is your week to consider it. I want you, Leo, to take a few minutes to just envision yourself in that role. Close your eyes. Can you see it? Can you feel it? Did you know you can do it? This is a week to make some things happen. Can you see how you might get there? Close your eyes again and say, can I see the path? How could I do it? Maybe you got to go back to school. Maybe you got to get some special training. Maybe you've got to start a new business. Maybe you've got to rent a space. Maybe you need business cards. I don't know how. But you are ready to expand your horizons. It could be through study. It could be through teaching others. Maybe you've been studying something and then you're ready to give it out to the world. But it is time to broaden your world, broaden your base, and really grow. You have such an ability with this moon, this full moon, and not just right now, but over the next 30 days, this whole moon cycle, to take a, a quantum leap in the growth toward the dream. But you need to spend some time identifying what is the dream for you, Leo. You might be uh, thinking about publishing your ideas, starting to write a blog, starting to do a podcast. These are all great ideas, ways that you can expand. So Leo, I want you to think about expansion. It's your time to get bigger and louder, believe it or not, bigger and louder. And next we have Virgo. Virgo, this week you are digging. You are digging into intimacy, into transformation, into deep dark places that maybe you don't like to dig into, okay? This is eighth house energy. It could be secrets. It could be fears. It could be, you know, just inner work that you need to do, shadow work. Um, and this full moon is inviting you to go deep within and part of it is actually to clear it out. So just like I was telling you about my dog, you know, they need to clear all that gunk out of there. Virgo, you like to be clean. You like cleansing. You like refining. You like making things better. And so themes of intimacy and, you know, deep, deep topics with other people, deep conversations, crucial conversations. That's what I'm thinking about. Crucial conversations need to come up. And you need to consider, what do I need to clear out? Um, it's a time to drain the swamps for yourself emotionally. And you need to allow yourself to be vulnerable, Virgo. And thinking about not holding back. You know, whatever. Uh, sometimes, Virgo, you can be very controlled. You like to control the situation. And this is a time that you need to just let loose and say it like it is. And you may hurt some feelings, but you know what? You're going to feel better for it. It's a time for you to transform yourself in an emotional way. 
And you can't do that unless you open yourself up and be able to say what needs to be said in those close relationships. So dig in this week, Virgo. I'm going to get a little drink. Next we have Libra. Libra, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Relationships, friendships, partnerships, they're all the focus for you during this full moon. You're going to find yourself, as usual, on the fence trying to reassess the balance of roles and autonomy and love and relationship. And it's a time for you to strengthen your boundaries, okay? So you need to make sure that you are protecting yourself, Libra, and that you don't cause that balance to tip a little too heavily in a way that doesn't feel authentic and good to you, okay? Trust is a key theme for your week, both in yourself and for others, considering how you can create partnerships where you both feel deeply connected. Same as like that Aries vibe. It's me and we. How can you make those two things balance? And Libra, you've got such a nice way of finding equilibrium. You are so kind, so fair, so accepting. I know that you are going to do a great job of being able to reach out across the aisle and figure out how can we both get along. And sometimes this is about listening. You know, sometimes people just want to feel heard. So if I had one piece of advice this week, Libra, I would say try to listen more than you speak so you understand what the needs of the other are. And then you can come back to your own needs and figure out where do I need boundaries? Where is this too much? Where is this not enough? And then you'll be able to respond in an appropriate way. So happy birthday, Libra. And then next we have Scorpio. It's almost your birthday month, Scorpio. This is a week for focusing on your habits, on your routines, on your well-being, your health, and your systems. The little things are the big things this week, Scorpio. They're coming into focus. All these little habits, all these little details that shape your life, you know. Are your routines supporting your mental health, your emotional health, your physical health? It may be time to make a change that prioritizes your well-being, Scorpio. You may, may need to get back in the gym, get back on the treadmill, reduce the sugar. You know, looking at the structures you have built, are they sustainable? Do you need to change them up? And it's a time to create healthier patterns that allow you to thrive and that are going to be more helpful to you in the future. So look at those little systems and see where you need to change up the details. Scorpio, if you can identify one habit that you can change to better support your overall well-being, what would it be? That's your question of the week. And then next we have Sagittarius. Sagittarius, this is a creative week for you. You are courageously creative. In some ways, you're going to be like Leo the Lion, Sag. This full moon is a time to let your true self shine. You are so creative and Venus is coming into your sign and she wants to share it with the world. Your potential is off the charts this week, this month, this whole moon cycle. And it, the universe is asking for you to step forward and share your gifts with others. So I ask you, Sag, how comfortable are you with being seen? Because it's time to be seen. It's time to get out there. Express your authenticity and allow others to witness your charisma, your shine, your magnetism. Because you are magnetic right now, Sag. Uh, learn how to take a compliment. If somebody says, oh my gosh, that was so wonderful. You're the most beautiful, great thing I've ever seen. Rather than say, oh no, no, no. Don't downplay it. Just say, oh, thank you. You know, that's how you take a compliment, Sag. You just say thank you and you get quiet. You say thank you. I appreciate that. That's all you have to do. Don't negate it and let that compliment warm you and that warmth, your natural sunny personality is just going to shine from the inside out. So this is a shiny, bright, Leo kind of week, but not just this week coming off the full moon, really this whole month. And then before you know it, it's going to be Sag season, which is the season of candles. And Venus is already lighting her little candle for you. And things are going to be starting to look up Sag. 
edge. I already feel it. It's like singing. So I want you to really dial in and see where life is singing for you because it is. Capricorn. Capricorn, my key word for you this week is slow down and why. Your home and family life are in focus right now. So you are looking at emotional needs, people in your family, your roots, you know, where you come from, places, spaces that feel like home. And Cap, you need to slow down and feel it. You tend to bypass your needs because you're being tough and you're handling all the things and then you've got to take time to play catch up with how you felt about all the things that have happened. So this week you may find yourself reflecting on how you handle vulnerability within those relationships. Take time to acknowledge and allow yourself to cry. You know, we have all that water energy coming in next Monday. It's okay. You're going to feel a little overwhelmed, a little detached. This is the time to create a more nurturing environment at home and open up and be vulnerable to those people that you want to connect with and be closest to. So slow down, Cap, and feel it all this week. Aquarius. Aquarius, there is a student teacher vibe in the sky for you right now. So this moon says, listen, Linda, instead of rushing to speak, practice the art of listening deeply, which will lead to greater understanding and connection. It's a part of your observation abilities, Aquarius. So ask questions, seek to understand. Keep asking those questions and listen to the answers. You're going to learn some different perspectives about people and try to remain open. I know we can go right into judgment, but Aquarius, you need to try to remain open to what other people have to say and think, what new thing can I learn from this? Okay, just by being open, just by listening. You're going to increase connections that way, and you want connections with other people. You really do, but sometimes this little wall can get built between you and others, Aquarius, and sometimes it's because you do know the answer. You are smart. You do have lots of solutions, but I'm going to tell you to rip your lip and listen, Linda. This is your week to listen to others. Really listen and be curious. Pisces. Pisces, this is a money moon for you, girlfriend. The moon is making you think about your foundations, your security, and what makes you feel safe, clarity of values, and keeping it simple. Okay, that's a lot. First, the full moon brings attention to money and material security. Are your financial decisions aligned with the life you want to be in? If the answer is no, it's time to start a savings account. It's time to cut down on the coffee shop, right? And that way you can save the money that you need to save so you will feel a little more in control of your finances. And then next, it's time to reassess your view on abundance. Like what makes you feel good on the inside? Maybe it's more than a bank account. Maybe it's how you feel. Maybe it's an environment that you need to feel a certain way. So how you do that is you lean into your senses, starting to prioritize the things that bring you happiness. Like maybe it's just having a candle. Maybe it's buying yourself some flowers. Maybe it's playing a certain kind of music. You know, that stuff can make you feel good. Good food, snuggly sheets, incense, getting out in nature, you know, connecting to music or art or books or movies. Whatever feels good to you. Maybe it's also creating art, art, Pisces. You can be highly creative and maybe you have a different kind of art form you've been wanting to explore. Maybe it's this time of year we like to uh, sometimes knit and crochet. I have a neighbor who likes to knit socks. That's a form of art. Finding some way to express yourself that feels good to you. And that's going to help you to connect to your security base and what feels like abundance to you, Pisces. So first, money moon 
and then security and abundance mindset. So that is your week, and Pisces means we have wrapped it up through all 12 signs. So thank you for almost an hour we have spent together. I hope you have fast-forwarded and rewound to the parts that you want to listen to, listening first for your rising sign, second for your sun sign, then your moon, then your Mars can help you to get a real balance on what this full moon is bringing in for you and how how you can use those moons to your advantage and I'm telling you it will be life-changing if you start adapting to the changing of the moon and understanding your own internal makeup and what moons are good for you so for me for instance I have a lot of fire in my chart so a fire and an air moon is going to feel most supportive but a uh, earth and a water moon may feel a little less supportive. Earth moon, I'm going to get a lot done. We're all globally going to get a lot done. Uh, water moon makes us all a little more emotional than usual. So, you know, it just depends on what our energy is and what energy is in the sky and kind of knowing the blend. And if you keep listening to these forecasts or any astrology forecast, you're going to start to get a flavor. If you're really into astrology and you, you dip your toe in, you listen to different people, you know, tell about the energy, just keep listening. I listen to about 10 different podcasts a week. And then when you're ready to really step your toe in, come over to astrocollege.org and take one of our classes. And I would recommend you come and start with the forecast for 2025 because that's going to help you get to know what the energies for next year are going to be. So astrology is my passion. I've been studying for years. I am learning and growing. I'm a work in progress every day. I don't know it all. I only know the things that I've learned to this point, you know. And we just, we just keep moving along. That's all we can do. So uh, please reach out. We would love to hear from you. Please be sure to go and like and subscribe this video. And by golly, share it. If we could grow this channel, we can get astrology out to more people in the world. And please come and visit either all of us collectively at astrocollege.org or you can come to my website, MagicalLifeAstrology.com, if you're uh, looking for guidance from me. So uh, I would love to hear from you. Please share our channel and like and subscribe. And until next week, um, have a great full moon week. You know, make this energy work for you in the best way that you can. And my advice is to go follow those moons. So have a good one, and I will see you next time. Bye, friends.